Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to talk to you about a brand new feature called Middleware. Middleware is a reusable piece of logic that executes at specific points inside of your function stack. We have pre-middleware, which executes before input validation happens, and then we have post-middleware, which happens right before your function stack delivers a response. Now, the first question you might have right up front is, how is this different than a custom function? A custom function is also a reusable piece of logic that will execute at whatever point I tell it to in a function stack. Well, there's two key differences between middleware and custom functions. The first is how middleware actually can interact with the data that is provided to it, which we'll demonstrate in just a little bit. And the second is how middleware can actually be applied. The huge advantage to using middleware is that it can be applied at a workspace or API group level, which means you can apply it to all of your APIs or a collection of APIs in one swing, as opposed to a custom function where you would have to go and add it to each of those APIs manually and republish them. Middleware is great for things like super advanced input validation. While we have the ability for you to add filters to your inputs now to validate some things, middleware gives you the power of the entire function stack to do exactly what you need to do. Or maybe you're using a post middleware for some advanced logging or data collection. You could even use it to deliver customized API responses based on certain factors or information about your users. Middleware offers a whole new level of flexibility and efficiency when building inside of Xano. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so here we are in Xano. I'm gonna go over to the library section in my left-hand menu, and you'll see we have this new item called middleware. So let's go ahead and click on this. We're presented with a list of all of the middleware that exists inside of our application. And when we want to add a new one, we can just click add middleware up in the corner. Let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this my new middleware. So you can see this looks very similar to the no code API builder or when you're building a custom function or a background task, but there are a couple of key differences to be aware of when building your middleware. The first is the inputs. We can see that we have a couple of inputs here, but there's no option for me to add new inputs. That is because the inputs that middleware uses are directly inherited from the parent object. Because pre-middleware runs before input validation even happens, the data that we would have to work with here would be all of the inputs that are sent to the API. If we were building a post-middleware, our inputs would be anything that is contained in the response. The second difference is how does the middleware handle that parent object when it's done executing? That is defined in the response type. We have two types to choose from, that is merge and replace. Merge will take the items that are returned by the middleware and, as the name suggests, merge them with the items in the parent object. The other option is replace. Replace will take all of the items that are returned by the middleware and use that as a full replacement for the parent object. So essentially what that means is we could have a bunch of inputs come into our API. We could run our middleware to do whatever we want to do with those. And then whatever our middleware outputs will completely replace those inputs entirely for the rest of the function stack. Let's build out just a very simple middleware and I'll give you a couple of examples of how everything works. So this is the API that we will be working with. You can see it is incredibly simple. All we're doing is taking in this text input and then we are returning it in the response. Now I want to apply some middleware to this to do some advanced input validation. So that is going to be a pre-middleware. Let's head over to our library and we'll go to middleware. We'll click add middleware and we'll call this input validate. To our function stack, we are going to add a precondition. And this precondition is what's going to be responsible for my input validation. So we'll open the expression builder for our precondition. Now the name of the input inside of our API is called text. And we know that with pre-middleware, all of the inputs that we are sending to the API are going to be contained in this vars input. So let's go ahead and select that. And we'll add some dot notation to reference our text input specifically. And we're just going to say that we want this to equal hello with a capital H. We'll go ahead and save that. And let's return an unauthorized error if this does not equal hello. So we'll go ahead and save that and let's publish our changes. 
In this case, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'm going to click the three dots in the upper right hand corner and we'll choose middleware. I'm going to choose add pre middleware and we'll select the middleware that we've built. We'll save our changes. And now that middleware is applied to all of the APIs across our workspace. Let's go back to the API that we were originally exploring. And we can see now we have this indicator here that says one pre middleware, and we can click on this to see the middleware that has been applied. And when we run this, let's go ahead and provide a value of hello. Everything works great as expected. Let's apply a value of goodbye. And you can see that that precondition that's contained in our middleware has failed again as expected. So this is a very simplistic, but a great example of how you could very quickly apply something like input validation using middleware to all of your APIs at once. Now, let's say that we don't want this to apply to all of our APIs, but we only want it to apply to a specific API group. So in my default API group, let's say I don't want the middleware to apply to this group. I can go over to the middleware panel. I can click customize and you can see that that middleware is now gone. So I don't need to worry about that middleware executing for these APIs specifically. We can also add different middleware if we had a piece that we only wanted to apply to this group and nowhere else. We can also do the same thing at an API level. So we have middleware here that input validate is still here because I didn't save my changes in the previous screen. What if I want this to apply to every API except this one? Well, that's just as easy as choosing customize and now that middleware will no longer run on this API endpoint specifically. So even though middleware offers you the ability to quickly apply it across your entire application or a specific API group, you still have that more granular control when you need it. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the different response types that are available with middleware. Again, that is replace or merge. So let's take a look at our example API. And this API is very basic. All it's doing is creating a variable with a value of hello, and it is returning that in our response. We can run this here and we can see that it works as expected. Now I'm going to build a new piece of middleware, and this is going to be a post middleware to change the response. So we'll call this response. In the function stack for our middleware, we're going to create another variable and we'll give this a value of goodbye. We'll go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to first demonstrate the merge response type. So by default, that is what the middleware will be set to. In our response, our middleware is going to return that new variable we just created, but I also want it to return the data from the response that the API is generating. So let's go ahead and add that here. We'll do vars.result, which is where all of that data will be contained. We'll publish our changes, and then let's add this to our example API. We'll go up here to our middleware panel. We'll customize our post middleware, just so we can add this to only this API. We'll save our changes. And now when we run this, you can see that not only are we returned what this API is originally providing, but we are also returned what the middleware is providing. So we have that goodbye variable that the middleware has created. And then we have the data from our original response, which the middleware is also outputting. Now we can have our middleware just replace the response entirely instead, because it probably doesn't make sense for us to return this twice. So let's go back to our middleware. We'll go to the settings and we will change the response type to replace. We'll go ahead and publish our changes. And now when we head back to the API and we run this again, you can see that this is no longer being returned twice. And we just have what the middleware is generating. Now, maybe there's a scenario where you don't want whatever is contained in this API response to be returned at all. So we can go back to the middleware. And all we need to do is remove this vars.result option from our response. Go ahead and publish our changes. We'll head back to the API one more time. And you can see when we run this again, all we are returned is that one variable that the middleware has created. So having these different response types can be super powerful and help you determine exactly what you want returned ultimately when your API is called. 
Your middleware can work with anything that you return in this response block right here, but the API doesn't actually have to respond with what is in here. You can have it respond with whatever you like. You can use your middleware to format the response in a different way if you wanted to do that. Because you have the entire function stack to work with, the options are pretty much endless. Now, before we wrap up this video, I want to give you a real world example of how one might use middleware in their running application. So in this example workspace, it's kind of like an Instagram clone, but it's much simpler. Our users can post photos, scroll through them, add comments, and like photos. That's basically it. Now, we've built our application, we've launched it, everybody's loving it, but we have an issue where one of our users is exhibiting some problematic behavior on the platform, and we want to ban them as quickly as possible from accessing the application. But the problem is, when we were building our application, we were designing our database, we did not take into account the ability to ban users. We don't have that functionality at all, and we need to deploy it as quickly as possible. Before middleware, this might have looked like building a custom function to check if that user is the user that's making requests, and then adding that custom function to all of our APIs one at a time, and then publishing those changes. But with middleware, this enables us to perform the same steps a lot faster. So the first thing we need to do is head to our database. We're going to take a look at our user table, and you can see all we have here is usernames and passwords. I'm going to add a new field. This is going to be a Boolean field, and we'll just call this band. And we're going to say that user number one, which is Chris, is a uh, band. Now we'll head over to our middleware. We're going to add a new piece of middleware, and we'll call this band check. Now, the middleware has access to variables such as auth ID, which is the ID of the user that is making an authenticated request. So we can reference that in our function stack. We'll first use a get record on the user table to get the record of the authenticated user. And then we're going to use a precondition. And this precondition is going to check to see if the user one dot band, that's the field that we just added to our database, is false. So if that band checkbox is false, so unchecked, that means that the execution will continue as normal. But if this is true, then we want to return an error message and let the user know what's going on. We'll say, you have been restricted. Please reach out to support. So that is the error message that we'll return, and we'll choose unauthorized as the error type. Go ahead and save our changes and publish. And so now we've built our middleware that checks to see if that user is banned. Let's head over to our dashboard. We'll click the three dots. We'll choose middleware, and we're going to add a pre-middleware. We'll select the band to check middleware that we just created. We'll save our changes. And with that, we have applied this band check to all of our APIs in one single swing. Let's check it out in action. Let's head over to one of our APIs, and we can see we have this auth me endpoint here that does require authentication, so that user token is going to be provided. And we can see we have our one pre-middleware applied, which is that band check. We've made no changes to this function stack directly. We can run it, and we can go ahead and choose the auth token for user number one. And you can see we get this, you have been restricted, please reach out to support error message. But if we choose another user, such as Cameron, who is not banned, we can run this again, and we are returned to the user data as expected. So this took maybe just a minute or two for us to design and implement a banned user check for our entire application. Now, I'm not 100% done yet because I do have some APIs that don't take in authentication tokens. So what happens then? Let's check our auth signup API. So the signup API does not require authentication. This is just to sign up a user, so they're not authenticated yet. Let's create a new, new user, and we'll go ahead and give them a nice password. And when we run this, you can see that we get this weird access denied error. That's because our middleware is trying to check for that auth ID. So what I can do, because I know that this is the only endpoint in my application that does not require authentication, I can just go over here to my middleware, I'll click customize, and now that pre-middleware is no longer running on this API. Quick publish of my changes, and now my signups are working again. 
but the band check is still happening across all of my other APIs. It's really that simple. I really hope you found this video on middleware helpful. We cannot wait to see how you use this in your applications. If you have any questions or if you just want to tell us how you plan to use middleware, please do so down in the comments below or join us on the Xano community at community.xano.com. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.